Hello, my name is uh, Joost Heroma. I'm um, the Director of Science of Greenhouse Medical, um, uh, GH Medical. Um, Greenhouse Medical is an initiative from Greenhouse and we are in, uh, in a greenhouse coffee shop. Actually, this is the, the first greenhouse coffee shop in Amsterdam. Today, uh, we're going to talk a bit about the medical aspects of, um, of cannabis and also the reason why uh, Greenhouse Medical was, uh, was formed. So, so let me take you uh, back about 30 years in time. Uh, 1985 is when Greenhouse uh, originally started in this place. And um, apart from, from selling cannabis, Greenhouse was a bit more um, uh, adventurous. So uh, the people behind Greenhouse decided to actually travel across the globe to find all these lambs raised seeds. So the, 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 the seeds of cannabis that had not been adulterated by, uh, by crossing and you know, you know the whole commercialized use of cannabis. So we actually could go back to the original seeds with the original qualities. And so uh, this, uh, this initiative was called Strain Hunters. So they made Strain Hunters documentaries going to Africa, to India, to South America to find these original land raised seeds. Um, about five years ago, I was just lying on the sofa watching one of these uh, Strain Hunters documentaries, and I had my uh, my eureka moment, my epiphany, because uh, all of a sudden I thought, okay, these land raised seeds are th the key to the future of medicine, cannabis-based medicine, that is. And uh, I just decided to write these guys at Greenhouse an email, uh, asking, like, have you ever thought about doing biomedical research? And they said, well, um, please explain. And uh, so I came over to explain. And well, that was history. That was four years ago now. And uh, here we are with um, Greenhouse Medical, which, is, which started uh, four years ago. And we are um, steadily building on a scientific basis for the medical use of cannabis. And that's why we're here. So one of the major projects that we're working on is actually creating awareness because, well, I'm sure you've all uh, seen that in the last couple of years uh, there is a green revolution going around the world and this year alone I think about 10 different countries have chosen to embrace me uh, the medicinal use of cannabis uh, and this is usually by force of the public. But now governments are facing a different problem because uh, after 80 years of having locked up everyone who knew anything about cannabis, all of a sudden they need to have thousands of kilograms of, uh, of cannabis at medicinal grade and they need doctors to be able to prescribe this. And doctors don't know uh, about the medicinal use of cannabis. Pharmacies don't know how to produce the medicine and scientists don't even know what to research because no one has a clue about why medicinal cannabis is so incredibly important. And this is one of the main tasks for GH Medical at the moment is to raise this awareness. So we have built uh, what we think is the largest repository of, uh, of scientific articles about the medicinal use of cannabis. So we now have a dossier on more than 50 diseases that can potentially be treated with, uh, with cannabis or cannabinoids. Uh, we have a dossier on uh, more than 50 components of the endocannabinoid system which will provide us with clues how we can use cannabinoids to treat all these different diseases. And uh, we have created uh, uh, an educational module for continued medical education for healthcare professionals so that they learn about what is, uh, what is cannabis, what are the cannabinoids, how do cannabinoids work and how can you use them to actually treat or prevent diseases. Um, and well, I of course invite you all to have a look at the GH Medical website and see for yourself. And uh, hopefully this way we can reach as many uh, physicians as possible and uh, provide the best possible start for them to start prescribing uh, medicinal cannabis. 
So what we are doing uh, is we are going to other places in the world, uh, such as Africa or Latin America, where uh, a there is a much larger need for uh, for cannabis as a medicine, and b there is more sympathy for the use of cannabis and other herbal products as well as uh, as medicine. So what we are doing there is we're teaching uh, the, the physicians to work with medicine that is locally available and we're teaching them also to set up the clinical trials and give us the scientific feedback that we need to show to the rest of the world how important medical cannabis is. Speaking of terpenes, so uh, as you may or may not know, um, the, the cannabis uh, contains cannabinoids, which for instance like THC or CBD, so THC is the stuff that is psychoactive and gets you high, and CBD does more or less the opposite in your brain. But we also know that there are a number of fragrances in, uh, in cannabis. These are called the terpenes. And these are the very same fragrances that we find in lemons, in pine cones, in lavender, in peppercorns and everything. And uh, apart from giving you taste or smell, these terpenes actually have medical functions of their own. And we're only just starting to figure out what these medical functions are. For instance, we all, uh, we know that um, lavender, for instance, calms you down. This is the reason why everyone's got these little pouches of lavender lying between their clothes. It has a calming effect, a sedative effect on you. Um, same reason is um, almost all washing up liquid in the world contains, or smells of citrus fruit, it contains limonene. And that's not only because it cleans your dishes, but actually it gives you a clean feeling in your head as well. Uh, and for this, uh, for this reason, limonene may be useful to treat anxiety syndromes, for instance. We really don't have an idea yet how this works exactly. This is actually the reason why we have launched this survey uh, to find out which people are using which strains for what particular reason. For instance, one thing that many people don't know about terpenes is that they create uh, a large part of the effect uh, of cannabis. So, pretty much every strain that we know uh, in, in the Western world at the moment is very high in THC and very low in every other component. Still, we, uh, we make the division, for instance, between sativa and indica strains, and we all know that all these different strains that you can buy have severely different effects on your well, psychological uh, well-being, or on your psyche. And uh, the difference is not the cannabinoids. The difference is made by the terpenes. So we already know that having a slightly different mixture of terpenes in your cannabis can have a hugely different effect, for instance, on the therapeutic benefits. We just don't know what these effects are. And uh, one way to find out about this is by taking these, this questionnaire and letting people tell us why they are using a particular strain and then as long as, long as we know which terpenoids are in each individual strain this will inform us about the therapeutic benefits of terpenes. The GH Medical Survey is, um, is a questionnaire that is devised to um, extract information from, uh, from patients about uh, what they are using. Are they using a particular strain to reach a particular effect? Uh, have, have patients found their own way of, of dealing with their disease? Because uh, this is something that we, um, as, a, as a research community, don't really know. There are two ways. Of, uh, of collecting data about which, uh, which cannabis strain or which cannabinoid is good for a particular disease. One is the actual fundamental research, 
where you look at how does um, how what are the components of, of cannabis and how do each does each component work uh, th that's a very valuable way of, of getting information but in the case of cannabis there's uh, there's another way we already know that millions of people have been using cannabis for thousands of years, everyone for their particular reason, and this is what we want to find out. We already know that cannabis is an extremely safe medicine to take from a toxicological point of view, so people can freely experiment uh, which strain or which mixture of components works best for them. And if uh, through this survey we are trying to find out uh, if we can uh, get some statistical information from global usage or, um, to see uh, is any particular strain good for any particular disease. Of course, uh, the situation is completely imperfect because um, even for instance, if someone reports uh, I am using super lemon haze to deal with my anxiety, uh, we don't really even know if uh, super lemon haze from some vendor in the United States is the same as that some, someone else might make at home in Italy or somewhere else in India. We don't really have a way of dealing with this yet. Uh, but we, we're just trying to get as much information as possible uh, and maybe if through this questionnaire we find out that for instance super lemon haze is very good to treat anxiety uh, then maybe this will become an argument to for instance the Italian government that they will allow the use of super lemon haze for this particular reason so um, yeah I don't really have an, have an answer to this, but we are trying to get there, especially this is the reason why this survey data is so important. <laughs>